Ready? Hello, uh, my name is Jonas, and I'm a Debian developer. Uh, I will talk about uh, ways that you can trust your computer and trust your operating system. So, <coughs> uh, the Typically, when you're talking about uh, security and privacy and uh, protecting yourself, a, a common thing is to talk about that uh, you want to secure things. And the word has a meaning, but what I have found a lot is that the word does not have the meaning that you need. So I will ta start out with trying to, to kill the word secure. If you go to a shop or if you talk to a technician, then and they talk about things being secure, then it's completely bullshit from your point of view. Not from their point of view, they're not lying to you. But from your point of view as a consumer, as a user, as a non-technical person, you want something that is trustworthy. You don't want something that is secure. Why? Because if you think about it, if I hope that I'm right here. This is not something that I have verified and have uh, authenticated with uh, experts. It's something that I have thought about myself, and you are welcome to shoot me down after the, the talk, okay? <laughs> so um, what I've thought about is the word secure, what it really means is that it is not changing. So it is reliable, meaning that it does what it was intended to do. And that's all very well and good. Like if you compare to cars, computers compared to cars is a common thing. If you r drive with your car and you come to a bridge crossing some big gap and you don't want to fall down, then is it secure? Well, the bridge can be very, very secure, meaning that it is doing what it was intended for, and still you can crash. If you come with a big truck filled with, uh, with, with uh, something heavy, then you can, you can crash on this bridge if it was not secured for the thing that you need it secured for. So there's this thing of like, which context are you talking in? It's not enough that things are secure, it depends on what security. What, do you, what are you talking about? There's this, an old movie with the, um, wh where this, this person is, is keeps talking about, is it safe? Is it safe? And there's also these uh, people calling in a phone line and saying, is it a safe line? What, what bullshit is that? It depends on what you mean. It depends on what is a is person standing next to you. It doesn't really matter if the line is encrypted. Is it secure? Depends on what security against what. You have to know your enemy, some of the security experts say. I'm, I'm, I'm getting dizzy in my head when, when people talk about your enemy. I don't want to talk about my enemy. I want to I be safe. I want to I wanna be, I wanna have privacy. I want to protect myself. I don't want to talk about enemy pictures. But um, so security, the word secure means different things depending on the context. It just means, oh, it just means that things are boring, that it doesn't change. A bridge is boring, but it might not be secure for what you are doing with the bridge. If you're jumping up and down on a bridge, then maybe it breaks, even if it was secure enough for what the government was authorizing the bridge to do. Um, what you really want to do with your computer, I am assuming here, sorry, th what I'm talking about here is a person like you and me and my mother and my father and my brothers who wants to run their computer and be feel safe. I'm not talking about geeks. I'm talk talking about experts here. I'm not an expert in a lot of things. I'm a l an expert in a little, uh, in small pieces of the whole picture. So all of us are non-experts in most of the things here. So what we want is to keep safe from harm. There's the classical term of, of uh, you have nothing to hide, so you don't need to care about these things. Sure, you don't need to care if you have nothing to hide, nothing to lose, nothing to hijack, nothing to disturb, nothing to interrupt. If you have no presence digitally, then sure, you don't need to care about digital so stuff, but then you wouldn't need to buy a new computer. So the very thing that you want to buy a new computer means that you have some reason to 
care about your data on this internet, on, on this uh, computer. Um, what you need to do is to establish trust. You need to you need to believe in someone else, in what you're doing. And what when you buy a computer, you go to a shop, you talk to a salesperson, and the salesperson says, this machine is great for you. You should buy this one. And then you walk out of the shop and says, no, you want to join this talk because you want to have a second opinion. That is trying to establish trust. You want to have a second opinion on why would you want to pick one product instead of another product. Um, this is a this is a mini debconf, which means I I'm interested in Debian, uh, and I assume that you everybody knows that what Debian is. I'm in love with Debian, and I strongly believe that Debian is uh, has some security features, has some safety measures built into how it's it's uh, designed, how we are developing the system. Um, what I generally suggest is that you install on machines that can run Debian, run Debian on the machine. So for an operating system, the, the job is simple. For me, I would say, well, run Debian wherever you can. What I mean by that is run Debian and only Debian. Don't run Debian and then download the Ubuntu packages that doesn't exist in Debian. Th there's a reason they don't exist in Debian. That's because no one in Debian has double check that it works for the context of Debian. So it doesn't it isn't double checked by Debian experts. Uh, and don't download the plugins that you can from your web browser. Your web browser is a window to the rest of the world. So you sure you can shoot yourself in the foot, you can you can ruin the integrity of the Debian system, but try to avoid that. So what I'm suggesting what I, is to run the system that we ship. We are a thousand guys that try hard to make a secure system. And for the computers that cannot run Debian, like oh, not that one, like this one, my phone, this one cannot run Debian, not as it as its main co computer system at least. Uh, for these computers, uh, my recommendation is to run a system that is at least has someone that passionately tries to fix all the bugs. And the system today that generally tries to do that is a system called um, Lineage OS that covers most of the uh, phones you can, you can buy today. Um, another system is more free, meaning that it is avoiding more of the evil design stuff, or potentially evil design stuff, um, which is called Replicant. Personally, I don't use Replicant at the moment because, yes, it tries to avoid uh, some, some of the, the bad stuff, but it is a very low-powered uh, low system. There's very few people involved in the system, and they can't keep up with all the changes to software, so they don't provide updates very frequently, sadly. I would love to be able to run Replicant and also have frequent updates to the software, but I cannot do that. If you are a, a geek and you have spare time enough, then you can compile from sources based on Replicant. But it takes a day or so to compile a system for my phone, and I, so now that means I only have six days a week to, to use an up-to-date system, and uh, I need to spend the rest of the time to compile the system. So for the computer software, the distribution on your s computer, if it can run Debian, I advise to run Debian on it. If it cannot run Debian, if it is a phone, my suggestion is to run Lineage OS on the, the machine. Um, so for what computer should you use? Oh, yes? Correct, yes. Yes, yes. Software running when uh, the vehicles you are there uh, next year, beginning of uh, 2019. Yes, if I should repeat for the for the video uh, that uh, 
there is a project happening at the moment on uh, from uh, the company Purism to create a phone that can run uh, the a proper Li Debian system or Debian-like systems. And yes, that's true. And I was actually hired six months ago, and I'm really excited to work with the, the Purism uh, company. I don't work directly on, on the phone parts, on the hardware. I'm working on uh, making Debian system, removing the part of Debian that free software foundation don't like, so that it is both free from the point of view of Debian and also free from the point of view of free software foundation. But yes, it's correct. There's a work in progress. It's very, very exciting, but it also is a work in progress. There will be more than one year before the phone exists physically in the world. We can hold it in our hands. And even when it exists, mm, it might not be the kind of experience that you are used to from an Android device. It's, it will probably be a very, very simple experience that you have from these phones in the first run. Things will, of course, radically change when we have these phones, when we have something that can run Debian from the beginning. Then it will be a very exciting world where we can do a lot of other exciting stuff, but it takes time. And I'm not only here talking about things that exist today. Um, so if you want to then buy a piece of hardware that goes good with your free software system, what hardware should you then use? Um, for phones, well, I suggest to buy the hardware that can run free uh, the uh, replicant system, the most free system. And the, the one that I have found that is the newest that can still run the replicant system is the one I have in my hand, a Samsung Galaxy phone. You don't need to write these things down. I, at the end, I will give you the, the link uh, for the web address for, for this slide, uh, for these slides. So, um, and for a, a home computer, a desktop computer, for those of us who still use that kind of creature, uh, I would suggest to buy whatever you like from the shops, as long as you avoid the worst nightmares, which is NVIDIA and Broadcom things. NVIDIA is typically the graphics card, the cheaper graphics card that still uh, has uh, big numbers on, on the very speedy, powerful uh, chips, they, pr they typically they are from NVIDIA. They have problems with free software. They don't work well together, collaborate well to with free software developers. And Broadcom chips that is typically found in Wi-Fi drivers and network drivers. So if you just steer free of these two, then you will be surprised that you will only have the selection from half of this shop that you enter into. Uh, it's a lot of them are used with these uh, chips. But there will be options that don't use these two chips. And I would generally say, buy one of those. Of course, you are better off if you then say, look through the catalog and then pick 15 items and then you go to your best friend that is a computer geek and say, between these 15 items, which one is more secure and why? But if you're on your own, just avoid these two chips, buy whatever, if it's your a stationary old st style computer. Or if you want to be fancy, then you can also buy a little tiny box the from a, a Bulgarian company called Olimex, o Olinux, yeah, Oli Olimex um, that, that creates some very cheap uh, new computers called a Lime 2. So, or if you want to buy a laptop, then you are more in problem, uh, in trouble. A lot of them is using Nvidia and Broadcom. And another problem, a big problem of, of these is also uh, that I'm just, I just realized now that I'm mixing up a little bit the, uh, what is what I call secure in the desktop and laptops. So I'm more cautious with laptops because it it's laptops that I'm more focused on. <laughs> there are other issues with modern com PC uh, desktop computers too. For PCs, the main issue, the concern that I would raise today is an issue that had come up the la since uh, 2012 or thereabout with a, a remote control engine inside uh, Intel and AMD computers. So I don't want to get too technical here unless you have questions afterwards. But the main issue of this is that 
the computers designed today, all of them can be remote controlled, in principle, can be remote controlled from outside. Most likely, they won't be, because it's most likely the chips are designed so that you actively have to enable it. You have to give your consent, most likely. Uh, and most likely, there are no bugs that can be abused so that you can they can be remote controlled without your consent. But there's a slight risk that they can be abused. So because of this risk, if you are interested in a secure computer, a trusted environment, then you should try to avoid the risk of being remote controlled. And today, for the laptops, there are very, very few options for avoiding this. One option is buy a specific older laptop that where, the, where this is known to be able to be disabled. Uh, there's uh, a laptop called the uh, LibreBoot T400. Let's I have a link for this in at the end of the, of the slides. So there's a laptop called a LibreBoot T400, which is, I think, five or six years old, if not more. People uh, much into uh, ThinkPads, they must correct me here. Um, so it's a reasonably fast computer, but not the fastest of today. And you can buy that as an, a refurbished laptop where they remove this remote uh, administration cap capability. If you want to buy powerful hardware, uh, I don't think you would need that as an average user, really. Honestly, you'd think that you need a powerful computer, but most people really don't. Uh, but if you really need a powerful computer, then I, I know only of one option today. And uh, to be fair, I am paid by the company who produces these computers since six months. Uh, it's the, the, the Librem laptops from Purism. They are not cheap, to say it mildly, but they are the only ones uh, that I am aware of at all in the world that is uh, a modern standard and have not have crippled this ability to, to remote control them. Huh? The brand? Uh, the it's it's uh, Librem. So the com company is Purism, and, and the, the, the name of the la brand is Librem. So Librem, Librem machine. So, right, and then I also I put in, anyway, I did, I did put in, if you are, if you can wait a, a year, then there will also be a phone for, uh, that is the Librem 5 phone that is better than what you can do today. And if you can, if you are a more geeky person, then I've also thrown in some options of uh, what more geeky things can you do instead. Yes? So the phone, there is also uh, a solution supplied by uh, Lola, uh, Sailfish, which is medium. Uh, there, there are more options than this that has sec various security features. The Yola phone is not one of them. I do not deliberately include the Yola phone <coughs> because the first, technically, the first step I, uh, the thing that I distinguish here is does it run mainline Linux? The Yola phone does not run mainline Linux, so I don't see that as a sensible phone to include in that range. This one also does not run. Uh, the Linux kernel, uh, this one also runs the a Linux kernel. So uh, what I'm saying when I'm saying mainline Linux, I mean the Linux that Linux Torvalds is maintaining. And, the, and Yola, as far as I know, is not running the Linux that Linux Torvalds is maintaining. He is running the kernel that Linux Torvalds maintained five years ago. And then th he stopped maintaining that because he was moving on and improving a lot of functionality. Mm -hmm. So all of the phones, all of them, all of the millions of phones running Android today, they run on a crappy, shitty old version of Linux. All of them. Crappy, shitty old. <laughs> and Yola included. Yeah. Uh, correct me if, you, if I'm wrong here, but I strongly yeah. believe that, that Yola is also in this boat of running crappy, shitty old core. And I then on top sure of that is maintaining the... I'm unsure, but I think they have backported uh, uh, the security of... Uh, yes. Uh, 
So, so among the crappy, shitty old uh, cores, <laughs> the, the, the most uh, uh, resourceful of the companies who are running the crappy, shitty old cores, they, in, they backport, they cherry pick what they believe is the relevant parts mm -hmm. from current mainline Linux. Mm -hmm. And then the parts that they miss or the parts that they decide is not relevant for you to have, mm -hmm. they don't backport. In mm -hmm. other words, someone else decides, someone else than you and someone else than the experts of writing Linux, mm -hmm. they decide what is relevant for you to have in your phone. Mm -hmm. And that is not secure by my standards. And it is by someone else's standard. Mm -hmm. It is by Yola's standards. Oh, I agree. And, and so, but, but that, uh, that's, that's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of gray areas here, and I'm not saying that it's total crap. I only say that it, the core is total crap, and and it is. And you have the embed uh, proprietary software. Well, but there's other issues with Yola, but that the but on, the, on the top of the stack. But I'm trying to avoid the technical mm -hmm. details here. I'm not. You can shoot everything down. The problem here is there's nothing that is perfect in this mm -hmm. world. The w the things that are m closest to being perfect at the moment is things like this uh, Lime 2 piece of hardware, which is a little geeky, but I believe actually I could give that to my mom and it will be running mm -hmm. a, a year day later, securely. It can run plain Debian and it runs a mainline Lino Linux kernel, but it is a little geeky. But the thing is that of that one is the chip is not behaving well with pre-licensing. So th all of them can be shut down. And the, the solution to that is, okay, we should give up on computers because not, not, none of it is completely free. <coughs> but none of us has this, is, is, we, we're not at Nirvana yet. But I'm cutting my, I'm setting, uh, drawing the line a little different than, than you, if you... Uh, 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 I'm not the drawing the any line. Uh. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Just um, saying that there, was a, there is a solution which is better than the Android that and the iOS uh, standard stuff. Right. Sailfish and Yola is interesting, some parts of it is interesting. And the day we have the Librem phone and similar mainline Linux phones, mm -hmm. we can reuse mm -hmm. the good stuff that they're using in, th in their phone. But their full phone today is, by my standards, not an interesting option. I would not recommend it to my friends. Okay. Yeah? Um, another thing about laptop computers, there is a there's a German company, I believe they're German, Tuxedo Computers. Do you know them? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, it's unfair that I mentioned one of, of, of the, of the pla places. I put up one of them mentioning Libreboot T400. Ah, there okay. are other companies than uh, this one, if you click the link, it's this is blue, not black. <laughs> uh, if you click the link here, you go to uh, a, a UK company mm -hmm. uh, called Ministry of Freedom, I think. Uh, and there are other companies than these people who are doing exactly the same as they do, but which I is... I, I think they, they are doing more... Oh. I'm not sure, but it, it looks more a little bit like, like the Librem, like something they built. So it's not a refurbished um, Lenovo computer okay. or something, but I, I think it's uh, they built this from material they buy on the market and, and put a brand on it and... and there's, uh, there's, a German, there's a German company yeah. who are testing computers to run li li Linux. And there is a uh, Spanish company testing their computers and running well with Linux. And the KDE uh, community is endorsing the Spanish one and making a, a KDE branded laptop. And so there's, there's, a, there's a couple in US also, there are three different companies, I believe, in US who is also doing things that they are testing well with running with Linux in general. So th yes, there are options that are, th it's, it's more refined than this. That's correct. But the German company, I'm quite sure, doesn't do what Librem is doing with having very modern computers and ensuring that it cannot run the uh, management engine from Intel. That is the only company I'm aware of that, can, that succeeds in crippling this remote control uh, machinery for modern computers. There's a range of different companies, that what I was trying to say before is that there's a German company, there's a, there's a UK company, there's an American company that does a similar thing of ensuring no remote control for the uh, Lenovo X400. And no, nothing newer than that. So if, uh, if there's anything newer than that, it will be uh, have the risk of remote control from all of these companies, as far as I, I, I have been able to find. Um, so, yes? Um, I'm sorry, did you say when this 
Could you repeat? Did you say when this Purism Librem 5 will be on the market? Um, there has been a fundraising campaign to, to even start the, the thing, uh, which succeeded a uh, few weeks ago. And uh, that means that now there has been the start of hiring people and starting the de design of the, of, of, of the board and all of these things. So in no, no sooner than one year. The plan is, I believe, one year and three months from now, there will be a phone. So that is the plan. And of course, I shouldn't say more because I'm paid by the company, but we all know that it's not always that companies deliver in time. So it might be a couple of months extra to really make it working. Okay. So one and one, one and a half year. It's 2019? Yes. Okay, thank you. 2000, yeah, 19, yeah. So, So now you know what computer you should buy. Done deal. You should buy a great computer, and you should run a great computer system on it. So what you should also do is you should pass that on to your friends. And you should uh, elect me for government, and then I can uh, write into law that we should all have the ability to do these things. Now, the, the, the point here is what is the, the reason that we have this very limited options, is that we, in reality, skip buying the sensible stuff. We buy the cheaper and more shiny stuff. We are the reason we don't have more free options. Because in modern society, we don't vote for our leaders, we shop for our leaders. Shop for what, however we shape society. So if we want to change things, it is painful to change it because we need to stop shopping the fun things. Because essentially, what we want is security, and security is whatever is boring. It is what is not exciting. So if we want non-exciting things, we should stop shopping for the exciting things. Don't buy the laptop with a fingerprint reader. Because the fingerprint reader, you don't bullshit about what the fingerprint reader really does. And if you ask any ex of the experts, then they, 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 funny enough, don't mention the fingerprint reader in any of their reports about how you should secure your, your life. But you, you can see that it's cool. You can see that it's shining, right? So you want to buy that anyway, just, 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 just to try it out, right? And that means that you skip buying the thing that, can be remote, that cannot be remote controlled in order to have this shiny thingy that really doesn't do much. And if you look closer, then you can you saw the movies of how you can do take a piece of, of, of tape and then you can copy the, the fingerprint of someone else and, and you can do exactly that on your fingerprint reader. So you can test out as a geek, prove the theories that are, that are shown in, in the movies. That, that you can do with your fingerprint reader. But please, buy it as a separate product. Don't buy it as a, a ingrained into your laptop because you want to throw it out the moment you learn what this box is really doing. So uh, another thing is that you just listen to me for maybe 15 minutes about this is what you should do. This is the solution. This, this, is, this is safe, right? But I started out saying that you shouldn't listen to people talking about what is secure. You, you, should, you, should, you should figure out what is trustworthy. And the thing is, don't trust me on what I'm saying here. You should be inspired by me in how you should think yourself when you go shopping or when you go ask your friends that are geeky or claim that they are geeky or claim that they know everything. I claim that I know everything about what you should shop. So you should listen to me, but then you should in the end decide for, your, for yourself. How do you do that? Because you don't know, you're not an expert. Well, you get a second opinion, a third opinion. You Google it. So I'm just giving you some suggestions on what kind of things should you look for. I said some evil stuff like NVIDIA, and I said something about mainline Linux. So every time people say that, oh, it runs Linux, it runs Linux, it's got to be good, right? Yeah, it runs crappy old Linux, is what I'm saying. You, you probably cannot Google for crappy old Linux. I don't think that any of them says, yay, this one runs crappy old Linux. But try and search if they have mentioned, if they've remembered to mention mainline Linux. 
And if you cannot do that, then, then, then check out when was this Linux last updated? They probably forgot to mention that in their sales papers. So and the thing is, if it, doesn't uh, is it, if it isn't written, then uh, it was deliberate on their part. Except for purism, of course. That was, that was a slippery slope. That's because they forgot to mention it on their web page. If you go to the purism web page and you don't find anything about mainline Linux, then please send an email to them and whine about them and say that they are insecure. Then they probably wake up. Then we wake up and correct the web page. Because, yes, the Debian running on the, uh, the Linux running on the, on the purism uh, laptops, it mainline Linux. It is the Linux that was ru just released yesterday. We can run that. The phones, no phones can do that today. Um, a last thing that is maybe obvious to some here, but uh, that's the thing of, of how, do you, how do you trust someone? In one of the reasons that I love Debian and just straight out recommend everybody to run Debian on their machines is that Debian is strongly active in what is called the web of trust, which means that we try to tie each other in a, in, a, in a closely knitted digital network so that people can't escape from the errors they make. All of us make errors, but what we do in Debian is that we can point fingers at those who make errors so that they don't do it again and so that we can correct the errors. There's no, there's no uh, escaping what you do of errors. So we try to work very transparently and we try to work responsibly, not by uh, paying uh, for our employees and then firing people that don't uh, behave properly. We don't involve money in our work. But what we do in Debian is that we say that everybody has to sign in on what they do. Whatever they commit to do in Debian, they, si they prove that they have their name on it. So I have my name at stake. Whatever I do in Debian, if I do some foolish stuff, then my colleagues in Debian, they can point fingers at me and say, well, this was not, this was not, this, this was hilarious. They can write a blog post about me, and that is very hurtful for me. If anybody, Debian, says that I'm stupid, that hurts. So that's the kind of guarantee that I can tell you <laughs> that you can have from Debian. So you have a, a thousand people who are trying to hold each other up for, uh, on their word, and everybody else in the whole world can double check if they really did hold each other up on the word because th we are transparent in this whole process. You probably won't ever do that yourself because it's, it's geeky work to double check if people were cheating or not. But the principle that we can do it means that anybody in the world who makes a university thesis about is Debian really transparent? Is Debian really not cheating anywhere? It will be blown up in the media if anybody finds out proof that Debian is fake. So that's the kind of, of countermeasures you can have. That's the kind of insurance you can get from a volunteer organization like Debian, that we are worthy of your trust. We offer you the ability to, for you to trust us. And similarly, you can try to look at different uh, organizations, different companies, are they worthy of your trust? The purism companies, is it worthy of your trust? Go to their website, go to the IRC channels and talk to them, whatever you can find about them. If you can't find anything, that is a, in itself a signal that, well, maybe you shouldn't trust them because they're not worthy of it. They don't do enough for you to have insurance in them, to hold them up on their word. Huh? Oh, I just found out how long my fancy Librem laptop can last on a, on a battery. So that's about six hours, I think. <laughs> How do I? Ah, okay. So don't trust anybody saying things are secure or things are safe because you need t context to understand what they're talking about. And don't trust me on whatever I'm saying here. Don't only take any inspiration from it. Trust whatever you find tr trustworthy. And then here's a link for the more concrete information that I 
to guess. So you can go double check and find more information. I will also put in the, I found the links for the, for the, for the, the German uh, uh, laptop maker and the, also the, the, the uh, Spanish one. So I will put that into the, uh, to the slides also. That's what I had to offer. Any questions? If you wait for the microphone. Um, so yes, Purism is doing a great work uh, on stripping the management and giant part of the Intel CPUs. But I'm wondering why are we sticking with those CPUs in the first, in, in first? Why don't we use other CPUs? I think there might be other manufacturers or maybe other CPU art architectures. Why, why don't we change? Good, good question. Um, so Purism specifically is aiming at regular users that is not short on money. Uh, so for their, aim, for their aim, they want very powerful computers and they want people to not get disappointed with not being able to run Steam or whatever they, in the end, wanted to use their computer for, even if it, uh, that has nothing to do with security. So for Purism specifically, they choose powerful mainline computers, or common computers. And there are no other common computers powerful enough to compete with Intel and AMD. That's the only two options for this grade of computers that can squeeze into a laptop. Th th there are computers, you can just double it up and you can, you can stack 15 ARM computers and then maybe you can have enough power but you can, cannot carry it in your, in your, in your, in your wallet or in your, in your bag. So, so that's for specifically for purism. They chose to have this aim. So more generally, yes, there are exciting possibilities for alternative to Intel and AMD. So within Intel-based computers, x86 or AMD 64-based, the uh, classical uh, system. There are other alternatives. There are uh, VR, VR computers, and there's a, 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 a few more that use those uh, replicants of, of uh, Intel-based computers. Yes, I think that they don't have this remote control engine, but also they are not very powerful. They are at the level that I have used VR computers for my home servers in the past, and I think that they are more safe, they're more secure than uh, Intel-based computers. But today, if you want something for a home server, I wouldn't, uh, my, my best suggestion is buy this one for 50 euro instead of buying a crippled down, simpler, slower one of these uh, for maybe 200 euros. I don't know the, the exact numbers. I'm from Denmark, so I don't, <laughs> I don't use euros <laughs> myself. So, so, so there are other options today that are simpler, but then the most common of the alternatives is ARM computers. And I already listed my best options for an ARM computer, which is open source hardware ARM based computer. That's the Olimix Lime 2. So, uh, and the other one, the other option, if you are into laptops, then geeks can buy an Olimix open source hardware, do it yourself, get a bag of pieces and screw it together. They just launched it one month ago, and I bought, bought one of them, super excited, and I spent a week preparing for this talk, not preparing for this talk, parking this talk and preparing for having, being able to show you all the Terris One running pure Debian, and I failed. So <laughs> that's why it was on page number two. <laughs> this, this, this is not ready for mainstream, this is not ready for ordinary people. This is a geeky product still. It was out one month ago, so it's not surprising. It, uh, it's not there yet. There is also an high-end uh, solution with uh, RISC V uh, microprocessors. It's, it's true that there are a few motherboards already existing and a few servers, but uh, the bottom line from the price point of view is roughly uh, 5,000 euros. And of course, you, you may run uh, Debian on top of that. The future is bright, no doubt. <laughs> the future. Because 
Yes, it is possible today to buy, today and to yesterday was possible to buy a Terrace One laptop and an, a RISC-V uh, board without any box around it. So yes, a, a, a week, a, let me, a week from now, you could build your own box around the board, the bare board uh, that you can buy today and yesterday. And then you would have to wait a year or two or how long will you estimate until we branch off a new Debian uh, architecture, because the detail of the RISC-V, super exciting uh, hardware product. RISC-V is the future, hopefully, maybe, together with the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, um, the GNU kernel, the herd, yeah. So <laughs> no, no, sorry, is it maybe one, may, why are you? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna solve that, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the Risk Five is exists today as a proof of concept chip. It doesn't it doesn't exist today as a hardware platform with supported by a free software reliable distribution. There is no Debian distribution supported for the architecture for Risk Five. There is a proof of concept experimental uh, snapshot that is half a year old and not updated regularly in the uh, in MIT for so that it you can prove that yes you can boot the machine and you can run stuff but this talk is about what is trustworthy not what is existing so the chip has possibilities in a future where it is also supported by trustworthy software at the moment you have trustworthy software Debian and you have trustworthy hardware risk 5 and they don't fit together because the risk 5 is only existing in I expect very, very little quantity because it's a proof of concept at the moment. And then the company might be bought by an evil bigger company uh, a month from now. So we have this other detail. <laughs> Any other questions? I'll switch back to the link. Well, then. Thanks a lot.